Hello everyone. I hope I'm clearly visible audible. Let me confirm if visibility audibility is great. I will start the lecture ahead. Give me a minute. Give me a minute to confirm. If you can see me clearly, you can give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Okay, I got it. So I hope it is working. So I welcome you all for today's session. A very good evening to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I'm here to continue my series of super simplified pathology. So I'm going to teach you entire pathology from Robbins. I will decode Robbins in a super simplified manner. So today topic which I'm going to cover is hemodynamics. It is a topic from general pathology. We have started general pathology. We have already covered first chapter in general pathology that is cell adaptations, cell injury and cell death that is apoptosis and necrosis in the last two days. Now I am starting the second chapter in pathology from general pathology that is hemodynamics. In hemodynamics I am going to cover these topics. These topics are ultra important for university exams of the second prof MBBS students in pathology not only in university exams but also for all competitive exams many 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 MCQs come from these topics in all competitive exams. Whether you talk about NEET PG, FMG, INICT or whether you talk about NEXT. So the weightage of this topic that is hemodynamics is very much. So let me start hemodynamics. In hemodynamics, I am going to cover edema. So, so today first lecture is edema. In the next lecture, I am going to cover hyperemia and congestion that is CVC. So I will cover CVC of three organs, CVC of lung, liver and spleen. After that, I am going to cover thrombosis and embolism in the next lecture, right? After that, ischemia, infarction and last but not least is the shock. Right. So I am going to cover all these topics one by one. Right. So without wasting time, let me start edema. Can you people see me? So if you have any doubt, please write down in the comment box. If you have any suggestion also, please write down in the comment box. Your doubts and suggestions are most welcome. Now let me start edema. So what is edema? I am going to teach you edema under following headings. First, I will let you know what is edema, the definition of edema. First, you should understand edema. The most important in edema is the pathogenesis of edema. Why it is occurring? Why? What is the reason of having edema? Right. So, the reason of edema is the pressure changes which occurs in the blood vessel. Right. For that, you should understand the normal pressure changes first. That is according to Starling's hypothesis or Starling's law. So, first, before understanding pathogenesis, you should understand the physiology. That is normal tissue exchange. So after definition, I will exchange you the physiology of normal tissue exchange. That is the pressures which are working at the tissue level in the capillary. After that, I will teach you the pathogenesis of edema, which is the most important topic for today. Then I will come on the types of the edema, the transudate, exudate, differences between them and some important types of edema of various organs. So it is a very, very, very important lecture. And in the end, we will solve some polls. In the polls, I will launch MCQs, which are the previous year questions of past five year. In all competitive exams, I will cover the questions from NEET PG, FMG, INICT, AIMS, PGI, JIPMER, all the competitive exams in the end. So you have to answer those questions correctly. For that, you have to be attentive during the entire lecture. So let me start edema. What is the definition of edema? In short, if you ask me what is edema, edema is known as swelling. Swelling at any part of the body, it is known as swelling. Hindi me puchu, it is known as sujan. So patient comes to you and say, doctor, I am having swelling at some part of the body. Either it is generalized swelling throughout the body or it is swelling of some uh, part of the body. It can be on the face, it can be on the limbs, it can be on the legs, anywhere. So swelling is known as edema. Swelling is known as edema. Now the question arises, how you will define it? So this is the definition of edema. Before that, so this is the edema. Can you see it is pitting edema? It is pitting edema. So it is the swelling. It can occur at any part of the body. That is swelling. That is known as edema. Can you see it? Yes. Can you see it? Now before understanding the definition, you should understand a concept interstitial space. Can you see this is an organ? It can be any organ of human body. Say any, any, any organ. All organs are made up of cells. Agreed. So human body is made up of cells. So these are the cells of any organ. Say is it a kidney, it is a liver, it is a spleen, any organ. So the space between the cells is known as interstitial space. Can you appreciate this space? Let me mark the space. I am marking with yellow color. The space between the cells. This space is known as interstitial space. Please understand the term interstitial space. So this space is the interstitial space. Normally this interstitial space is dry. There is no fluid inside the space. But if there is fluid accumulation in the interstitial space, 
it will constitute edema. So there is edema in that organ. Give me a thumbs up. You got the definition. So what is edema? Define edema now. It's easy now. So it is abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid where in the interstitial space. You got the meaning of the interstitial space. So interstitial space is the space between adjacent cells. So between the adjacent cells, the space is interstitial space. So you can see in the diagram, if fluid is coming from the blood and getting accumulated there in this space, so the organ will swell, the part will swell and that is known as edema. So that is the definition of the edema given in the Robbins and you have to learn this definition. So don't learn, understand it. What is edema? Have you got it, Manoj? Have you got it, Manoj Thakur? So anyone else who is listening to me, it is abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. That is edema. Now there is one more related term to it. That is effusion. What do you mean by effusion? Human body have multiple cavities. Let me draw a human body. So this is a human body. Can you see? This is a human body. In the human body, we have various cavities. Let me draw a few organs. So suppose these are the lungs. This is the heart. Right. And this is the abdomen, this is diaphragm, thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, pelvic cavity. We have various cavities. So, so the um, lungs are covered by pleural, pleural space. That is pleural cavity. The heart is covered by pericardial cavity. This is thoracic cavity. This is abdominal cavity. This is pari, pa, pelvic cavity. So, if fluid is accumulated in cavity, if fluid is accumulated in cavity, either pleural cavity or pericardial cavity, or thoracic cavity or abdominal cavity or pelvic cavity any cavity that is fluid is accumulated in cavity it is not interstitial space it is cavity then it is known as effusion it is not not known as edema it is known as effusion but the pathophysiology of both things is same edema and effusion so i am teaching you edema as well as effusion today the pathogenesis the pathophysiology of both of them is same so what is the definition of effusion you tell me it is also abnormal and excessive accumulation Edema is also abnormal and excessive accumulation of the fluid. Effusion is also abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid. But where? If you say edema, it is in interstitial space. If you say effusion, it is in cavity. Give me a thumbs up. So the summary is that abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid. That is accumulation of fluid. In If the accumulation of fluid takes place in interstitial space, interstitial space is the space between the cell. And if the abnormal and ac accumulation of the fluid takes place in the cavity, what does the two terminologies known as? So if the abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid takes place in interstitial space, it is known as edema. Edema is defined as this also, the spelled as this also and spelled as this also. In some books, the spelling is this, in some books, spelling is this. So both spellings are considered correct. If it is in cavity, excessive accumulation of fluid in the cavity, it is known as effusion. It is known as effusion. Again, give me a thumbs up. Vishenika, Manoj, have you got it? Give me a thumbs up. So that is the definition of edema and effusion. So the definition is done. We are done with edema. We are done with effusion. Various types of effusion are present. Can you see? This is pleural effusion. The fluid is collected in the pleural cavity. This is pericardial effusion. See, this is pericardial space. The fluid got collected in the pericardial space. So this is pericardial effusion. This is pleural effusion. Right? Right. So we are done with the definition of edema and effusion. Now, I want to teach you the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis means why. Why edema occurs. Why effusion occurs. But for understanding this, you should understand normal tissue exchange. Now listen, I will draw a diagram for you. I will draw a diagram for you. I will try to draw a dra diagram, a beautiful diagram for you. Listen, this is the organ. Let me draw an organ. Okay, this is any organ. Consider it is any, any, any organ. Now, in all organ, what is the point? All organs have an artery which supplies the pure blood to that organ. So, this is the artery of this organ. From the artery, the capillary arise. So, this is the capillary. This is the capillary. The blue color is the capillary. It is arising from the artery. And all the capillaries drain into the vein. All the capillaries drain into the vein. Let me draw a vein. So, this is the vein. This is the vein. Now, vein carries impure blood. We all know. We all know that this is the artery. It is carrying pure blood. And this is the vein. It is carrying impure blood. This happens in all organs. So, artery give rise. And this is a capillary. Artery give rise to capillary. And capillary leads to the vein. Now, how pure blood got converted into impure blood? While transit in the capillary. So, blood is actually traveling in the capillary. And while traveling in the capillary, blood from pure, it becomes impure. Now, capillary have two ends. This is the arterial end of the capillary. 
and this is the venous end of the capillary. I am talking about capillary. I am not interested in artery. I am not interested in vein. I will teach you all the pressure changes at the level of the capillary. Let's talk about capillary. Capillary have two ends. This is the arterial end of the capillary. From here, pure blood is entering. And this is the venous end of the capillary. From here, impure blood is exiting out. Give me a thumbs up if you got till now. How it is happening? Now, blood. Let me talk about blood. So, this is the blood. I'm, I'm making blood, the yellow color blood. It is the plasma present. Now, blood have RBC, blood have WBC, blood have platelets and blood has plasma. Plasma is the fluid present in the blood. So, this is the plasma in the blood, right? Now, this fluid, this plasma come out. Okay, let me use this color. Which color? This fluid come, at the arterial end of the capillary, the fluid come out. The fluid from the blood vessel come out. Come out. So, this is the interstitial space. It, the fluid get deposited here at the interstitial space. And at the venous end, it is again going back. Now, why the fluid is coming out and going back? Why it is happening at arterial end? Is, it is coming out. At venous end, it is going back. It is for the exchange with the cells of the organ. Exchange. Now, listen. All organs require oxygen. The oxygen is present in the blood. Since it is a pure blood, it contains oxygen. And tissue contains carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide should be excreted in the blood. So, for the exchange, the fluid is coming out. So, here is the fluid. So, from the fluid, the oxygen will go in and from the cell, the carbon dioxide will come out. So, whatever exchange is taking place after the exchange, after the exchange, the fluid will again go back in the blood. So, there is no, no fluid at the interstitial space at the end. So, interstitial space is dry. So, normally there is no edema. Normally, now this exchange is taking place inside me, you, every normal human being. Give me a thumbs up. So, can you see, can you see this is a capillary? I have drawn a capillary here. Everyone see, everyone see. Can you see this is the arterial end of the capillary? So it is carrying pure blood. And this is the venous end of the capillary. It is carrying impure blood. So it is carrying pure blood at the arterial end. It is carrying impure blood at the venous end. Say yes or no. So arterial and venous end are there. Now see, okay, this is the organ. Can you see this is the organ? These are the cells of the organ. So can you see the arrows here? See the arrows here. Here the fluid is coming out. Here the fluid is coming out from the capillary. So this is the fluid. After coming out, the necessary exchange will take place. So the oxygen will go in from the fluid to the cell and carbon dioxide will come out from the cell to the fluid. So after the necessary exchange, see the arrows. The fluid is again traveling inside so that the pure blood got converted into impure blood here. And the impure blood is drained into the vein. Now, give me a thumbs up first. Rishinika, Manoj, anyone else who is listening to me, please give me a thumbs up. Now, let me come on the pressures. If you got this, if you got this, let me come on the pressures now. Let me come on the pressure changes. How it is happening? I will ex explain you how it is happening. Have you got it? Have you got it? The two types of pressure. Uh, the, the how fluid is coming out at the so the summary is that till now I have taught you at the arterial end the fluid is coming out do the necessary exchange and at the venous end the fluid again goes back so this is now happening in me you in all our organs actually this is happening so you sh should ask me a question ma'am how it is happening how how the fluid knows that it is the arterial end I have to come out now and this is the venous end I have to go back how fluid come to know that and how fluid is doing this automatically it is all due to the pressures so the pressures are doing that so here there is outward pressure the net pressure is outward that's why fluid is coming out and here the net pressure is inward so i would like to talk about the pressures the various pressures which are present at the arterial end of the capillary and at the venous end of, of the capillary now listen there are two pressures basically we will talk about the two pressures the first is the hydrostatic pressure i will talk about the word hydro means water it is the pressure due to water it is the pressure due to the water present in the blood. Blood is basically 70% of the blood is water. So pressure due to the water, it is always outward pressure. Because water push outward. Water push outward. That's why the arrow is always outward. And the second pressure is osmotic or oncotic. One and the same thing. Osmotic or oncotic pressure. It is the pressure due to the protein present in the blood. Main protein is albumin. It is the pressure due to albumin. It is the pressure due to the albumin. Protein sucks water. It attracts water. That's why this pressure is always inward pressure. Give me a thumbs up. This pressure is always inward pressure. Let me draw a diagram for you. I will draw a capillary for you. I will draw a capillary for you. So this is the capillary. Please see a beautiful diagram I am drawing. Rishinika, Manoj, anyone else listening to me? This is a beautiful diagram of a capillary. See, this is my organ. These are the cells of my organ. The space between the cells is the interstitial space. You already know. 
this is any organ from head to toe consider it as any organ so this is my organ this is my organ and this is a capillary right in the capillary the blood is entering from here this is the pure blood and exiting from here this is the impure blood this is the arterial end of the capillary and this is the venous end of the capillary everyone give me a thumbs up now i will talk about the pressures at the arterial end the two pressures what is the hydrostatic pressure what is the oncotic pressure here at the arterial end and the same two pressures at the venous end of the capillary what is the value of hydrostatic pressure and what is the value of oncotic pressure or osmotic pressure at the venous end of the capillary listen first let me talk about osmotic pressure now oncotic pressure or osmotic pressure it is due to protein so protein is sucking water that's why it is inward pressure this one is inward and a hydrostatic is outward hydrostatic is always outward osmotic is always inward here also hydrostatic is always outward osmotic is inward it is a rule you have to learn it it is a golden rule hydrostatic is due to water it is outward and osmotic is due to uh, protein it is inward give me a thumbs up it is a rule now let me tell you the values of this so let me talk about the osmotic pressure so albumin we all have albumin in the blood so albumin causes 25 mm of hg pressure so that is the osmotic pressure and albumin is same throughout the albumin content at the arterial end of the capillary is same as the albumin content so whatever albumin is present here is traveling from here to here so same 25 mm yahan pe bhi hai same 25 mm of mercury here bhi hai so the value is 25 mm osmotic pressure is same throughout it is always 25 because if you have normal albumin if your albumin is less or more from the normal range it can be low or high but for normal individual i am talking so for a normal individual normal albumin level is 3 to 5 gram per deciliter if you have 3 to 5 gram of albumin in your blood your osmotic pressure will be 25 at the arterial end of the capillary as well as venous end of the capillary because while passing from arterial to venous end albumin do not change so whatever albumin present here the same albumin is traveling 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 and present here so it is causing same pressure at the arterial end and the venous end common sense right let me talk about hydrostatic pressure now let me talk about hydrostatic pressure so at the arterial end of the capillary the hydrostatic pressure is 38 mm of hg the unit is same 38 mm of mercury 38 so it is the water if your if your blood have normal water so it is it is creating 38 mm 38 mm now now which pressure is more you tell me which pressure is more out of the two you yourself tell which pressure is more of course the value 38 is more than 25 that is hydrostatic pressure is more than osmotic that is outward pressure is more than inward what is the difference 38 minus 25 kitna hota hai how much is the subtraction the difference the difference is 13 mm of mm of mercury this 13 mm is outward or inward Manoj Rishnika, this 13 mm is outward or inward? What is the net pressure? The net pressure is 13, but is it outward or inward? The value 38 is more than 25. So 38 minus 25, 38 is outward. So outward minus inward. So net is outward. So it is outward. So the fluid will come with 13 mm. With 13 mm pressure, the fluid will come out. That is the net pressure is outward. Yes, Manoj, the net pressure is outward. That's why the fluid is coming out. See, all the fluid get gathered here. it is get gathered here because of outward pressure which is 13 with 13 mm pressure the fluid will come out the water will come out so because of coming out it will do the necessary exchange so whatever oxygen want to go in it will go in inside all these cells whatever carbon dioxide want to come out it will come out so necessary exchange fluid is coming out for doing necessary exchange so the necessary exchange will take place this 13 mm se jo fluid bahar aa raha hai whatever fluid coming out of the blood vessel because of 13 mm of the pressure it will get accumulated in the interstitial space in the interstitial space it is accumulated temporarily transiently for a fraction of second sir it is not accumulated permanently agar permanent accumulation hai to it is edema i am teaching you normal i am not teaching you edema right now right so as i have told you the water is going out so whenever imagine the blood is entering here the blood is entering here so it is having full water most of the water is exited out with 13 mm of mercury the water is already out now when the blood is traveling towards venous end so there is less water less water means less hydrostatic pressure so what is the value of hydrostatic pressure at venous end at venous end what is the value of hydrostatic pressure so hydrostatic pressure is only 12 mm here it is only 12 instead of 38 it is only 12 it is only 12 now it is only 12 now at the venous end now at the venous end see the two pressures now see the two pressures at the venous end one is 25 one is 12 now you tell me which is more which is more so here at venous end at venous end osmotic pressure is more than hydrostatic what is the difference difference is 25 minus 12 the difference is again 13 again 13 but this difference is inward minus outward and net net is inward here also the difference is 13 but net is outward so the same fluid which goes out now the same fluid will come in 
विथ वॉट प्रेशर अगेन थर्टीन एम एम तो थर्टीन एम एम से ही बाहर गया डू द एक्सचेंज एंड थर्टीन एम एम से ही अंदर आ गया तो दैट इज ऑल हैपनिंग इन साइड दिस वॉज ऑल डिस्कवर्ड बाय स्टार्लिंग द नेम ऑफ द साइंटिस्ट इज स्टार्लिंग and this is known as starling's theory starling's law starling's hypothesis everyone give me a thumbs up come on i tried hard so what are the two pressures so what is the summary tell me the values of the two pressures at the arterial end and tell me the values of the two pressures at the venous end so this is a capillary you all can see this is a capillary beautiful capillary this is the arterial end of the capillary this is the venous end of the capillary and this is the tissue this is the tissue the interstitial space in the tissue this is the cells and the tissue so tell me hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure tell me the values of hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure at the arterial end as well as at the venous end hydrostatic pressure we know it is outward osmotic is inward here also outward inward tell me the net pressures at the two so who will tell me the values rishinika what is the values at artery very good at the arterial end the values are 38 and 25 what these are the values mm of hg of course very good at the arterial end what about the venous end prishinika what about venous end anyone else who's listening to me venous end what are the values osmotic still remains 25 there is no change in protein protein to same hi hai but the water goes out so less water here so here water is causing 38 mm here it is 12 mm now see the difference see the difference here the difference here is 13 see the difference here it is also 13 so 13 mm but this 13 is outward because hydrostatic is more than osmotic 38 is more than 25 and 38 minus 25 is 13 here osmotic is more than hydrostatic that is inward is more than outward so 25 minus 12 is 13 so net here is inward so basically what will happen imagine when blood is entering here so with 13 mm it will come out do the necessary exchange here gather in the interstitial space do the necessary exchange by exchange i mean by exchange every time i mean the oxygen will go inside the cell and the carbon dioxide will come out of the cell so pure blood will get converted into impure blood after the exchange with the same 13 mm the fluid will come in so the outward pressure is also 13 the inward pressure is also 13 so jitne se bahar aaya utne se wapas andar aa gaya so in the end in the end there is no fluid in the interstitial space and interstitial space is dry so normal persons don't have edema i don't have edema you don't have edema because inside my capillary inside your capillary this is the mechanics which is going on we are unaware of it but constantly at this moment i am teaching you you are listening inside us this all is playing this all is playing inside us this is happening inside us so the only thing we don't know so god has created such a beautiful mechanics that we don't have to bother i don't have to bother what is the what is the hydrostatic pressure of my capillary what is the osmotic pressure of my capillary at arterial and at venous and it is automatically happening inside me inside you inside every normal human being but if there are changes in the pressure it will lead to edema everyone give me a thumbs up come on so that is the mechanics that is the normal you got the normal so can you see uh can you see the capillary at the capillary see this is arterial and this is venous and everyone see at the arterial end the two pressures it is 38 and 25 the hydrostatic and osmotic right and at the venous end it is 25 and 12 the osmotic and the hydrostatic you can see the net difference here also 13 the net difference here also 13 it is outward it is inward give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you got it you got it now one more thing i would like to tell you uh okay these are the two major pressures in the capillary again i would like to draw the same diagram let me draw a capillary again so this is the capillary inside the capillary i am talking this is arterial end this is venous end right this is the cell not cell this is the tissue in the tissue we have a interstitial space in the tissue so interstitial fluid interstitial space is there listen what pressures i have talked till now i have talked about hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure of the capillary at the two ends arterial end and venous end we know the values okay these are the two major major pressures which are present in the capillary now let me tell you two minor pressure two minor pressure so this is interstitial fluid now let me talk about the interstitial fluid so this is interstitial fluid interstitial fluid also have two pressures like capillary interstitial fluid also have two pressures so in the interstitial fluid also we have the same two pressures hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure but not of capillary of the interstitial fluid these are two minor pressures minor but if it is given in the book i have to tell you minor also no so otherwise you will get confused this is hydrostatic and osmotic pressure of the capillary these are major now i am teaching you hydrostatic and osmotic of the interstitial fluid these are minor tell me the directions tell me the directions what is the hydrostatic pressure of the capillary what is the direction what is the direction of hydrostatic pressure of the capillary listen my question very clearly and answer it crystal clear what is the direction of hydrostatic pressure of the capillary i am asking so as i have told you that water 
ऑलवेज पुश 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 का मीनिंग समझता है क्या पुश पुश एंड पुल ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर मीन प्रोटीन प्रोटीन ऑलवेज पुल यू नो द मीनिंग ऑफ पुश एंड पुल पुश इज धकेलना एंड पुल मीन्स खींचना इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी तो पुश एंड पुल यस सो ऋषि का आउटवर्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैपिलरी यस यू आर राइट so it is pushing water here that's why hydrostatic pressure is outward and what is oncotic pressure vishnika it will be inward pressure because it will pull inside it will pull what about the well directions of hydrostatic and oncotic pressure of interstitial fluid interstitial fluid ka hydrostatic kya hoga hydrostatic pressure ye yahan se bhi push karega hydrostatic pressure always pushes wo jahan pe bhi water hai wahan se dur dhakelega if it is present in the capillary it will be away from the capillary that is outward If it is in the interstitial fluid, it will be away from the interstitial fluid that is inside the capillary. So hydrostatic pressure of the interstitial fluid is inward, and osmotic always attract water. So osmotic attract water. So water yaha aega to it is outward pressure for the capillary. You got my point. If you got it, it's good. If you don't got it, na don't bother. Just learn it. What you have to learn? There are, there is capillary pressures and there is interstitial fluid pressures. The capillary pressures are the major pressures. and the interstitial fluid pressures are the minor pressures first learn that right so total we are talking about four pressures here also we talk about hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure here also we will talk about hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure hydrostatic pressure in the capillary is outward but in interstitial fluid it is inward osmotic pressure in the capillary is inward but in interstitial fluid it is outward so learn that the arrows are opposite number 1 learn the values now learn the values now so if we talk about values osmotic pressure here is always 25 but hydrostatic pressure the value is different at the arterial end and at, at, at the venous end if you say arterial end it is 38 if you say venous end it is 12 i guess this is clear to you these are the major pressures these are the major pressures let me talk the values of interstitial fluid pressures the minor pressures so if we talk the values here hydrostatic pressure here is 8 and osmotic is 4 so can you see the values they are very minor but yeah they exist so total we talk about four pressures so whenever in my lecture i use the term hydrostatic pressure osmotic pressure i should mention that i am talking about hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure of the capillary or hydrostatic pressure or osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid if i am not using anything by default i am talking about capillary because it is the major i will not take these in consideration but i have enumerated since it is given in your book everyone give me a thumbs up so can you see the four pressures now let me mark in this diagram so hydrostatic and osmotic pressure here in the capillary at the arterial end at the venous end and hydrostatic this is interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure the value is 4 interstitial fluid osmotic pressure the value is 8 give me a thumbs up come on come on see the arrows if you can see i have marked the arrows very crystal clear hydrostatic pressure in the capillary is outward but hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial fluid is inward see osmotic pressure in the capillary is inward but in the interstitial fluid it is outward see the arrows are opposite i have drawn crystal clearly i cannot super simplify than this right have you got it so the same thing is written in front of you in front of you the four pressures are given they are mentioned you can see hydrostatic pressure of the capillary osmotic pressure of the capillary it is outward it is inward right but hydrostatic pressure of the interstitial fluid it is a minor pressure so it is inward instead of outward it is inward now and osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid it is also a minor pressure and instead of inward it is outward so the arrows are opposite i have told you the values also values are written arrows you have got so the thing is clear to you i am done with the normal starling's law this is all about i hope you have all studied this in the physiology in your childhood in your first prof mbbs you may have studied it right so at the arterial end what is happening at the arterial end the outward pressure is more than inward hydrostatic is more than osmotic so net pressure is 38 minus 25 that is 13 mm and net is outward net is outward at the venous end at the venous end the net is inward here on osmotic is more than hydrostatic so 25 minus 12 is 13 so both are equal and opposite so whatever fluid comes out of capillary again go back in the capillary so the fluid is coming out with 13 mm and again with 13 mm with it will go in give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so same diagram from the hushmon also whatever book you like you can prefer the diagram you can refer the diagrams can you see a blood capillary this is a blood capillary see this is the blood capillary see the arterial end see the venous end right and see this is a tissue these are the cells of the tissue appreciate the space between them the yellow color space between them the background yellow this is the interstitial space between the cells this is the now see the values of all pressure it is mentioned here so hydrostatic pressure 38 at the capillary at the venous end it is 12 osmotic pressure is 25 throughout 
if these are the major if we talk about minor you can see the values here so normally there is no edema normally there is no edema right so normally we don't have edema i don't have edema because there is a balance at the arterial end the pressure changes are balanced by the venous end at arterial end net pressure is 13 outward and at the venous end net pressure is 13 inward so that is the summary normal person don't have edema because the interstitial space is dry there is no fluid in the interstitial space you should ask me a question ma'am you you told us the values it is 38 25 and 25 12 we got it but even 1 mm idhar udhar ho gaya either increase or decrease 1 2 mm minute change bhi hoa so balance will yahan pe net outward just suppose 13 hai but net inward in 11 hai so fluid get accumulated na 2 mm ka fluid will get accumulated aayega 13 se but jayega 11 se so if i am give if i am doing a minute pressure change so it will lead to edema so you will say ma'am it is very risky sometimes me we may have a minute pressure change so will i have edema will i have edema no god has given us the backup for this so what is the god is great he has created human body with such a complexity that we need years to understand it now you can imagine isko padhna itna difficult hai the understanding of all these pressures is such difficult but it is happening inside me from my childhood from very first day i born and it will it will occur in my body till my death so it is constantly happening inside me the only thing i am unaware of it i am unaware of it and now i have read it so i have understood it is happening inside all of us so inside our blood our blood vessel it is happening constantly it is happening so god has created it such beautifully that it is already there right now listen one more thing god has given us lymphatics with every blood vessel parallel we have lymphatics along with the blood capillary you can see parallel lymphatics are there by default by default if minute pressure changes causing any interstitial fluid gathering there so they will take that interstitial fluid so these are like backup these are like backup vaise to there is no fluid because the balance is there whatever is coming out it is going in 13 is to 13 it is always balanced 13 outward is 13 inward there is no fluid but still if, if by chance any fluid is there any fluid is there that will be taken back by the lymphatics so lymphatics are acting, acting as a backup give me a thumbs up so lymphatics are there in this diagram also can you see the green color lymphatics are there these are the lymphatics can you notice the lymphatics these are the lymphatics so if any pressure changes ki wajah se any fluid is there lymphatics so normal person don't have edema i am done with the normal tissue exchange now you will tell me why edema will occur you have understood the pressures na you tell me what changes will occur that will lead to edema tell me the six causes of edema 1 2 3 4 5 6 that's it you have to tell me six causes of edema what are the six causes of edema one by one you have to tell me would you like to try so normal tissue exchange you have understood if any reason by any reason hydrostatic pressure of the capillary increased hydrostatic pressure is outward na if outward pressure is increased or inward pressure is decreased inward pressure is decreased that will lead to accumulation of fluid aayega zyada jayega kam coming is more and going back is less normally coming is with 13 mm and going back is 13 mm but if coming with more and going back is less the fluid get accumulated coming with 13 going with 10 so 3 mm fluid is get accumulated so that is the story so the first reason either increase in hydrostatic pressure so i will tell you in uh, so i will i will discuss all these in detail let me enumerate so i will tell you three reasons or two reasons of increased hydrostatic pressure i will tell you three reasons of decrease oncotic pressure that i will tell you later on let me enumerate give me a thumbs up so any cause which cause increase in hydrostatic pressure of the capillary i am talking about major pressure not minor or any cause which causes decrease in osmotic pressure of the capillary i am considering these two pressures for the capillary that is major wale if i talk about minor wale to ulta hoga that is not increase hydrostatic pressure decrease hydrostatic pressure and increase oncotic pressure of the interstitial fluid that is minor right that is minor that can also lead to edema that can also lead to edema yes or no agreed or not agreed tell me yes so these are the three causes the fourth cause lymphatic obstruction all the pressures are normal hydrostatic pressure is normal osmotic is normal major pressures are normal no minor pressures are normal still person is having edema why the person is having still edema because the lymphatics are not working the backup is blocked so lymphatics are obstructed that can lead to edema that is the fourth cause that is the fourth cause have you got it have you got it now listen let me draw a capillary so this is the capillary this is the capillary so what i am saying what i am saying either the hydrostatic pressure increases or the osmotic pressure decreases of the capillary so that will lead accumulation of the fluid here that is coming is more and going is less outward is more or, or the changes in the minor pressure minor pressure may ulta hoga so that is the third reason the fourth the backup is blocked what is the backup the backup is the lymphatics 
if the lymphatics are blocked that will lead to edema that will lead to edema now the fifth cause of the edema all the pressures are normal all pressures are normal and lymphatics are also normal they are not blocked still person can have edema you will say ma'am why you are saying all the pressures are normal major pressures are normal minor pressures are normal and lymphatics are also open still why the person will have edema still this person can have edema the reason for edema is the defect in the wall in the wall of the blood vessel if the wall of the blood vessel have holes or the defects or the gaps from this gaps the fluid will go out still the pressure is normal the, but the fluid will normally blood vessel don't have gaps it is continuous lining of the endothelium but during inflammation endothelial cells retract and between two adjacent cells we have defects we have gaps we have holes and from this holes it will come out so the fifth reason the fifth reason is increased vascular permeability which takes place in inflammation by the term increased vascular permeability and i mean defects or gaps in the wall of the blood vessel so all the pressures are normal lymphatic is normal still person can have edema if the permeability of the blood vessel is increased so blood vessel having gaps the person can have edema give me a thumbs up and the last and the sixth reason for the edema is sodium water retention in the body if body is doing sodium and water retention normal persons have 5 liter of blood if instead of 5 liter you have 6 liter 7 liter of blood so it can lead to edema sodium water retention can lead to edema so tell me the six causes of edema in the pathogenesis i will give you detail of all these six one by one have you got it what are the six causes of edema you tell me they are in front of you what are the six causes can you can you enumerate them the first is increased hydrostatic pressure the second is decreased osmotic pressure these both pressures are major pressure that is capillary pressure i am not talking about interstitial fluid the major pressure the major pressure outward is more inward is less the third is lymphatic obstruction the fourth is minor minor means tissue interstitial fluid ke pressures so here ulta ho jayega osmotic will increase and hydrostatic will decrease so these are the minor pressure changes the fifth one is sodium water retention sodium and the fifth one is increased capillary permeability that is holes in the capillary they take that takes takes place in inflammation so tell me everyone give me a thumbs up first have you got the six causes of edema i will explain you all the causes that is the pathogenesis of edema in detail but first you tell me have you got it what are the can you enumerate them have you got it yes okay i guess you got it so that is the pathogenesis of edema now you know all the pressures let me start them one by one let me start with the first one that is increased hydrostatic pressure let me start with the first one that is increased hydrostatic so the same six factors are given in robins also in hirschman also in all the books let me start so tell me two causes of increased hydrostatic pressure these are the two causes of increased hydrostatic pressure what will happen if hydrostatic pressure is more if hydrostatic pressure is more than osmotic pressure so imbalance will occur outward is more than inward normally outward is 13 inward is also 13 net outward net inward but i am saying outward is more instead of 13 it is 15 it is 20 whatever it is but inward is same so it is not same so fluid is coming out with 20 but going back with 13 so the remaining fluid is accumulated so that is leading to edema have you got it so that is leading to edema you got it now tell me the two reasons why hydrostatic pressure is increased so first is heart failure the first reason is heart failure let me draw a heart can you see a heart i guess you all can see a heart can you see the four chambers of the heart yes you all can see the four chambers of the heart can you see the blood vessels you already know which vessel arises from which chamber and this is the complete circle i am not repeating you all know this this is cardiac cycle you all know the details now i will tell you two condition one by one listen imagine a condition there is right heart failure the right heart is not pumping what will happen what will happen if the right heart is not pumping it is not doing the systole what will happen you will see ma'am if it is not doing a uh, systole if right heart failure is there the person is having right heart failure the blood will not go in pulmonary artery the blood will not go in the lungs for purification blood will remain in right ventricle only because the right ventricle is not pumping so blood will remain there only so backward flow of the blood will occur kaha jayega akhir blood jayega kaha it will not go ahead so it will go backward so from right ventricle the blood will move to the right auricle from right auricle the blood will move to superior inferior vena cava which drain in right auricle from superior inferior vena cava the blood will go in the veins all the veins of the organ drain in superior inferior vena cava from the veins it will it will go to the capillary capillary so capillary ka venous end having more blood more blood because of the backward blood flow more blood means more water more water means more hydrostatic pressure so in short hydrostatic pressure is increased because of the increase in hydrostatic pressure there is more blood here in the organ in the venous end of the capillary of the organ the fluid will come out and causing edema of the organ 
so all organs of the body will have edema and right heart failure this is the reason why in right heart failure patient will come to you edema throughout the body so that is the reason have you got it give me a thumbs up so right heart failure causes edema of all organs of the body this is the mechanism give me a thumbs up now you can ask me ma'am what will happen in left heart failure okay let's do it let's see do left heart failure now don't do right heart failure do left heart failure you tell me the story what will happen apply your common sense and tell me the story what will happen in left heart failure the left ventricle is not pumping now the left ventricle is not pumping so blood will not go ahead into the aorta blood will not go ahead into the aorta okay so where the blood will go if it is not pumping blood will accumulate in the left ventricle and go backward from left ventricle the blood will go in left auricle the blood will go in the left auricle from left auricle the blood will go in pulmonary vein and from pulmonary vein the blood will go backward into the lungs so into the lung capillary that is pulmonary capillary so there is more blood in the pulmonary capillary so fluid more blood means more water more water means more hydrostatic pressure so hydrostatic pressure in the lung capillary pulmonary capillary will increase the fluid will come out causing lung edema so in left heart failure you have edema only in lung but in right heart failure you have edema in all organs you got the reason so there are two patients in my clinic this is patient a and this is patient b i am having two patients in my clinic both are having edema so the first patient is coming to me and saying a complaint doctor i am having edema throughout the body all organs are swelled from head to toe i am swelled and the edema throughout the body that is generalized edema of all organs it is known as anasarca so simply the patient is having anasarca give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up this is my first patient second patient my second patient is not complaining of edema my second patient is giving the complaint of dyspnea this patient can't breathe this is having a problem in breathing dyspnea because if the patient is having uh, if i'm having swelling somewhere externally on the face on the hands on the limbs on the feet i can see it and i will go to the doctor and say doctor i'm having swelling here 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 it is external it is visible so in right heart failure swelling occurs throughout so it is visible to the patient but in left heart failure the swellings occur in the lung lungs are present inside thoracic cavity i cannot see my lungs if i am having a swelling in my lungs i am having edema in my lungs how i will know that i am having edema inside the, i cannot see my lungs now so i have a symptom the symptom is the dyspnea so patient don't come with edema patient come to you with a complaint of dyspnea dyspnea on walking dyspnea on doing any exercise dyspnea on doing any work so patient have respiratory compression right respiratory depression or dyspnea is there so Uh, if you do a x-ray on the x-ray it will be visible to you the patient is having pulmonary edema right now pulmonary edema now in both of these patient the investigation of choice is a 2d echocardiogram do a 2d echocardiogram it will be um, uh, it will be proven in the 2d echo it will be detected in 2d echocardiogram this patient is having right heart failure and this patient is having left heart failure the ejection pressure can be concluded in 2d echo give me a thumbs up so the summary is that in right heart failure patient have edema of all the organs in left heart failure patient have only pulmonary edema the reason is in front of you it is due to increased hydrostatic pressure the reason is increased hydrostatic pressure in right heart failure due to the backward flow of the blood increased hydrostatic pressure in all organs in left heart failure due to backward flow of the blood increased hydrostatic pressure in the lung more blood in the lung more water in the lung that is increased hydrostatic pressure so of increased hydrostatic pressure the first example is heart failure right heart failure and left heart failure right heart failure leads leads to edema of all organs left heart failure leads to edema of lung only that is pulmonary edema right give me a thumbs up that is the first reason that is the first cause of increased hydrostatic pressure the second cause of increased hydrostatic pressure is postural edema what do you mean by postural edema postural have you seen traffic police man what is the job of traffic policeman he has to stand for hours on the traffic signal so the job is standing not only traffic policeman other people who has a job of standing standing throughout the day so anyone having a job of standing professionally he is standing throughout the day due to any reason due to traffic policeman or any other reason long distance traveling in the flights or any reason the person is standing or sitting with constant without moving the legs so that is that is posture the posture is like this right so what will happen these are the veins of the leg these are the veins of the leg leg have big veins that is superficial and the deep veins of the leg due to gravity the gravity pulls the blood gravity due to gravity maximum blood is pulled here maximum blood out of the 5 liter of the blood maximum blood is pulled here into the leg veins i am talking about leg veins so maximum blood is pulled here due to gravity so more blood in the leg veins more water in the leg veins that will lead to increase hydrostatic pressure in the leg veins 
So if there is more blood here, more water here, more hydrostatic pressure, the fluid will come out, cause edema of the legs. So the legs are edematous. Legs are edematous in the such person. So this edema is known as postural edema. Sometimes we stand for the whole day due to any reason. So we have edema in the legs. Right? Give me a thumbs up. Everyone, that, that is postural edema. So two reasons for increased hydrostatic pressure. Increased hydrostatic pressure, the two causes is heart failure, both heart failure. Left heart failure, that will lead to lung edema, pulmonary edema. And right heart failure, that will lead to edema of all other organs. That is hydrostatic, heart failure. That second is postural, postural edema. That is due to constant standing or constant sitting at one position. Pair niche latkai huwe. One is alti palti. I don't know alti palti ko kya bolte hai English mein. So you take your foot uh, upwards on the bed, right? And one is I am sitting with my pairs, with my foot down, right? So on a chair we are sitting with our foot down. So that is that can cause the postural edema if the gravity is pulling the blood, right? Give me a thumbs up. So that is the two causes of increased hydrostatic pressure which will lead to edema. Let me come on the second cause, decreased oncotic pressure. Oncotic pressure is due to protein, as I have told you. So blood have protein. Two proteins are there, albumin and globulin. Albumin is four times more than globulin. So the oncotic pressure is mainly due to albumin, not due to globulin. If due to any reason, protein in the blood is less. The condition is known as hypoalbuminemia. Hypo means less. Albuminemia means albumin in the blood. Albumin in the blood. If there is less albumin in the blood, that will lead to edema. Now, why the blood albumin will fall? What is the normal range of uh, uh, protein? Normal protein, normal range of protein is 8. 8 gram per deciliter. I am having 8 gram of deciliter protein in my blood. You also have it. Normal human beings, this is the total protein. Total protein in our blood is 8 gram per deciliter. So when the edema will occur, when the, when the protein will fall, how much? If instead of 8, it is 5 or less than 5, then the edema will be there. At 6, 7, there will be no edema. Thoda kam hoga, to edema nahi hoga. Jab zada fall ho jayega, tab edema hoga. So the person will have edema when the protein value, total protein value is 5 or less than 5 gram per deciliter. So if I consider 8 as 100%, so what is 5? 5 is 63%. 63%. So can I say reduction to 63% of the protein will lead to edema? Give me a thumbs up as per MCQ. So that is the thing. Have you got it? So normal protein is 8. Normal protein is 8 gram per deciliter. If from 8 it falls to 5. That is 63%. So if the protein falls less than 63% in your blood, you will have edema. Instead of 8, if you have 5 gram of protein, that is instead of 100%, you are having 63% of the protein. Then the person will have edema. This is a normal person. This one is normal. Give me a thumbs up. Rishinika, Manoj, you got it. You got it. Yes. So tell me the three reasons. Three reasons. Okay. Can you see this diagram? Beautiful diagram I have drawn for you. Can you see a beautiful diagram? I have drawn for you. See this beautiful diagram I have drawn for you. Can you see a blood vessel? Yes, this is a blood vessel. Inside the blood vessel, can you see the red dots? The red dots are the protein. These red dots are the proteins. These red dots are proteins. From where protein is coming in the blood? Rishinika, from where protein come in the blood? Common sense from where it comes in the blood. You will say, ma'am, from diet, we eat protein. I eat protein. We eat egg. Egg contains protein. We eat pulses. Pulses, we eat soya bean, the richest source of the protein. So, we eat protein in many forms. So, whatever protein we are eating, it is absorbed from the GIT. It is absorbed from the intestine and reach in the blood. Number one, the first source. The first source is the diet. Diet may say, aata hai. number one, number one. Second, liver also synthesizes some protein. Some protein is synthesized in the liver and that is put in the blood. Give me a thumbs up. So, liver. So, second source of the protein is liver. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So, this all blood goes in the kidney. This all blood goes in the kidney. Can you see? This is the kidney. This is the kidney. So, the protein also goes in the kidney. So, in my kidney also protein is going but protein is not excreted in urine. Normal person urine don't contain protein. Don't. So, normal healthy human being urine. Protein is absent. Protein is not, never excreted in the 
in the urine this protein is utilized for making the body for the structural changes cell membrane alag alag functions ke liye we require protein we store protein but we not we do not excrete protein in the urine but sometime we have disease of the kidney that is nephritic syndrome or nephrotic syndrome the two type of diseases in the kidney in that the kidney is abnormal and it will excrete protein it can excrete protein in the urine so in the urine the protein is excreted now tell me three reasons the three organs are in front of you git liver and kidney which are involved in protein metabolism two are forming protein one is excreting protein right so tell me the three reasons the three reasons for fall in protein in the blood how the protein in the blood can be falled tell me the three reasons who will tell me the three reasons the first reason can be the diet if you are taking less protein in the diet or you are taking normal protein but intestine is not absorbing it there is there is problem in the intestine the cells of the intestine it is not doing the absorption so the first reason is mal absorption mal absorption means there there is problem in the intestine the first reason so the person will have less protein in the blood because of mal absorption the second problem is in the liver the liver is failed liver failure is there or cirrhosis is there inside the liver we have cirrhosis so liver is not synthesizing protein so this person also will have less protein in the blood because liver mein here the problem is with the absorption here the problem is with the synthesis either absorption is not normal or synthesis is, is not normal so person will have less protein in the blood the third problem is with the kidney in the kidney the person have nephritic or nephrotic syndrome so intestine is normal absorption is normal liver is normal synthesis is normal all the protein coming from the intestine and liver is excreted in the urine so again the person will have less protein in the blood so what are the three reasons whenever the person have less protein in the blood the oncotic pressure will fall and person will have edema so there are three reasons now no need to explain it right you got this crystal clear in this diagram please appreciate my efforts if you got this diagram appreciate my efforts give me a thumbs up in the comment box for appreciation have you got it what are the three reasons of decrease oncotic pressure that will lead to edema what who will tell me the three reasons number one malnutrition or malabsorption malnutrition that is the, the problem is with the intestine that is the problem with the absorption the second liver failure that is cirrhosis the problem here is with the liver and third nephritic and nephrotic syndrome of the kidney the problem here is the kidney here absorption is less here synthesis is less and here excretion is more so either absorption is less or synthesis is less or excretion is more in all the conditions person will have edema the person will have edema and the reason for the edema is decrease oncotic pressure the reason is same decrease oncotic pressure but the reason but the cause can be different so increase hydrostatic pressure and decrease oncotic pressure we have done these two things till now so there are three reasons of uh, two reasons of increase hydrostatic pressure either heart failure number 1 the right and left heart failure both and number two is postural edema due to the posture standing constant standing decrease oncotic pressure have three reasons number one malabsorption number two liver failure and number three kidney failure now see the three major organs beautifully rishinika manoj three see the three if i say heart failure the reason is increased heart failure increased hydrostatic pressure if i say liver failure the reason is decrease oncotic pressure and if i say renal failure the reason is again decrease oncotic pressure so the three major organ heart failure patient also have edema liver failure patient also have edema kidney failure patient also have edema but the cause is different everyone give me a thumbs up appreciate my efforts everyone coming on the next point lymphatic obstruction the next point is the lymphatic obstruction if the lymphatics got obstructed in any human being if lymphatics of when the lymphatic obstruction will occur tell me the three reasons the three reasons can you see the lymphatic the backup if it is obstructed it will lead to edema if the lymphatic is obstructed it will lead to edema it will lead to edema so why the lymphatics are obstructed do you know breast cancer it is the most common cancer of the female in the world can you see a breast here can you see a tumor in the breast that is breast cancer if any lady is having breast cancer and you are a surgeon so what you will operate what what portion you will take it out so you will do the surgery of course you will do the surgery for the breast cancer so in the surgery you will take out two things number one of course the tumor you will take out that portion of the tumor from the best breast and number two you will take the lymph can you see the green color lymphatics you will take the lymphatics of the breast that is axillary lymph nodes you will take this also out because we know that breast tumor most commonly most firstly and commonly it spread to the lymphatics it spread via lymphatics so we have fear that the tumor has already spread it to the lymphatics if we don't take the lymphatic and take only tumor out so the tumor will still remain in the body in lymph nodes and it can reoccur in future it can show metastasis in future we do not want metastasis so in surgery we will take the tumor out 
everyone wants to get tumor out but we will take lymphatic also now when lymphatics is not a vestigial organ if you have taken it out why god has given the lymphatics why god has given the lymphatics to prevent edema so if you take it it out in the surgery so the side effect of the surgery is this it is known as lymphedema so this female will have edema of the arm of that side of the arm whatever right or left breast jo bhi throughout the life so that is a complication of surgery you cannot avoid it so if you have to explain this complication before surgery you are a surgeon so you, you have to explain your lady the patient that we will do two surgeries in the same surgery we will take two things so we will take your tumor out from the breast number 1 and from your axilla we will take the lymph nodes out if we leave the lymph nodes we know don't know that tumor has already spread it there or not and it can reoccur in future so we have to do this we have to take the tumor out there is no effect of that okay there is a suture there is an incision suture but if we take the lymphatics out you can have lymphedema in future so that will remain throughout so that is a comorbidity that is a morbidity which is occurring due to surgery and the lady cannot avoid it lady do not want to die if the if the cancer is coming back uh, metastasis is occurring so it is stage 4 cancer no one wants the stage 4 cancer so it is a complication of surgery so in the surgery sometimes we remove the axillary lymph node so after mastectomy after the carcinoma of the breast carcinoma of the breast so the lady will have lymphedema of that arm affected arm throughout the life that can be the first reason that can be the first reason right the second reason uh, have you heard the name of a parasite the name of the parasite is wolcheria bancrofti can you see this is lymphatic appreciate this is a lymphatic see the lumen of the lymphatic it is filled with a worm can you see the worm here this is the parasite these are the worms looking like earthworm these are the parasite which parasite wolcheria bancrofti it is obstructing the lymphatic completely so lymphatic is non functional so it will lead to edema of the foot of the foot and leg and genitals in males the scrotum so edema so the foot is looking like a elephant elephant the foot is looking like a elephant foot that's why in hindi it is known as hathi paw hathi pair hathi paw the disease is known as in english it is known as elephantitis the disease is known as elephantitis it is due to lymphedema it is lymphedema the lymph node is not not surgically operated it is blocked by the parasite the name of the parasite is filaria or wolcheria bancrofti one and the same thing give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up that is the second reason that is filariasis wolcheria bancrofti it is causing obstruction of the lymphatic that will lead to elephantitis that is inflammation of the scrotum and the legs give me a thumbs up and third one the third one it is hereditary hereditary congenitally god has not given lymphatic in the entire body so can you see a child with entire body swelling throughout the swelling why the child is having throughout swelling it is lymphedema throughout the body because lymph nodes are abnormal so that is known as milroy disease milroy milroy disease so what is milroy disease what is milroy disease it is hereditary lymphedema due to abnormal lymphatic channel development so give me a thumbs up so these are the three reasons so tell me two reasons of increased hydrostatic pressure tell me three reasons of decrease oncotic pressure and tell me three reasons of lymphatic obstruction till now i have taught you this so can anyone tell me the summary till now can anyone tell me the summary the reasons i am asking so increased hydrostatic pressure have two reasons heart failure number 1 and postural edema number 2 decrease oncotic pressure have another two organs not heart it is liver failure kidney failure and malabsorption malabsorption that is intestinal failure right uh, lymphatic obstruction again have three reasons what are the three reasons number 1 surgically removed sometimes we have to remove the lymphatic surgically like in breast cancer the axillary lymph nodes sometimes it is absent hereditary hereditary it is abnormal and sometimes it is blocked by a parasite most commonly it is wolcheria bancrofti or it is also known as filaria it will lead to elephantitis yes give me a thumbs up you got it so the fourth i am not explaining it is the minor minor pressure change so minor pressure that is interstitial fluid ke pressure change there is no example of it so leave it there is no example of it so leave this the fourth one only enumerate but there is no example of it coming on the fifth one sodium water retention when sodium and water retention takes place in human body when does sodium and water retention takes place in human body when does it take place so i will tell you two conditions what are the two conditions let me enumerate one is heart failure and one is renal failure i will talk about them one by one okay see this is the heart failure left heart failure this time i have to do only left heart failure not right heart failure imagine left heart failure is there imagine left heart failure is there left what will happen i have already explained you what will happen krishnika what will happen in left heart failure what will happen blood will not go ahead right i have told you na blood will not so left ventricle is not pumping 
so if left ventricle is not pumping so left blood will, will not go ahead right so initially i have told you previously blood will go backward okay wo to jayega it will go backward in the left auricle from the left auricle it will go to pulmonary vein from pulmonary vein it will, it will go to the lungs and causes edema in the lungs i am not explaining you this 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 time i don't want to explain you this we have already studied it is due to increased hydrostatic pressure but blood will not go ahead uska kya uska kya blood is going backward causing edema in the lung i got it but blood is not going in aorta blood is not going in aorta so aorta is not receiving the blood so aorta supplies blood to all organs so all organs of the body are not receiving blood in left heart failure or they are receiving less blood or no blood yes manoj so they are receiving no blood or less blood all organs the most sensitive organ is the kidney the most sensitive organ is the kidney so we have a pair of kidneys the kidneys are receiving less blood or no blood because the left heart is failed left ventricle is not pumping so blood is not going coming in the aorta if the blood is not coming in the aorta no organ in the body is getting the blood so kidneys are not getting blood kidneys are most sensitive so in the kidney we have a apparatus which is known as jg apparatus dextro glomerular apparatus it will get stimulated it will get stimulated since the kidney is not getting the blood so it will secrete renin in the blood renin is an enzyme dextro glomerular apparatus secrete an enzyme in the blood as a result of stimulation it will secrete renin in the blood and renin will cause the cause the formation of angiotensin angiotensin 1 and 2 angiotensin will be formed this angiotensin what it will do what does this angiot it is complicated huh what does this angiotensin do this angiotensin will act on the kidney and do sodium water retention it will it will it will decrease the urine output sodium water retention ka matlab kya hai what do you mean by sodium water retention normally in my body sodium and water is excreted in urine but if the body is doing sodium water retention i will not excrete sodium and water in the urine so sodium and water will be retained in the body if they are retained in the body there is more sodium there is more water it will cause edema it will cause edema so that sodium water retention will cause edema so why the kidney is doing this kidney is leading to edema why because kidney is feeling i am not receiving blood kidney is not so since there is left heart failure now left ventricle is not pumping so blood is not coming in the aorta so no organ is getting the blood so since kidney is also not kidney is one of the organ since none of the organ is getting blood so kidney is also not getting blood blood so kidney is a fool actually kidney is a fool kidney why kidney is feeling that why i am not getting the blood uh, kidney is not getting the blood so kidney is thinking that why i am not getting the blood so kidney is thinking there is less blood in the body instead of 5 liter there is 3 liter 2 liter blood that's why i am not receiving the blood heart is not giving blood to me aorta is not giving blood to me so let's increase the volume of the blood so for increasing the volume kidney is secreting renin renin is forming angiotensin and angiotensin is doing sodium water retention by doing sodium water retention but it is not the case now we already have 5 liter of blood so instead of 5 liter the person will have 6 liter 7 liter of the blood because of sodium water retention that will lead to edema kidney is doing as a part of comp compensation but actually it is doing the harm give me a thumbs up so in left heart failure we have edema due to sodium water retention during left heart failure we have sodium water retention in the kidney that will lead to edema give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up now i'm coming on renal failure so that is about the heart failure if heart failure is there i'm talking about left heart failure so there is less renal blood flow less blood in the aorta less blood in the aorta so less blood in the kidney less blood in the kidney so it will lead to activation of renin renin will lead to the formation of angiotensin and angiotensin will do sodium water retention there is more sodium more water in the body that will lead to edema give me a thumbs up you got it so in heart failure we have edema we have edema now in heart failure we have edema due to two reasons first i have told you due to due to increased hydrostatic pressure we have edema in heart failure and second is due to sodium water retention we have edema in the heart failure give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up where is the heart let me explain you again so imagine left ventricle is not pumping so blood is going back causing edema in the lung the reason is increased heart uh, hydrostatic pressure and blood is not coming forward so there is no blood in the kidney so kidney will do sodium water retention so the reason here for the edema is sodium water retention so in heart failure we have two types of edema two causes of edema edema is same so basically person will come to you with edema so this is a person in front of you this is a patient the so patient is having edema this patient is coming with a complaint of edema or the patient is coming with a complaint of dyspnea dyspnea is the edema in the lungs right dyspnea the patient is having dyspnea so the patient is basically have left heart failure in the left heart it is failed the left heart of the patient is failed left ventricle is not pumping so blood is not going forward it is going backward due to the backward flow the blood is accumulated in the lungs 
that's why person have pulmonary edema and blood is not going forward so kidney is not receiving the blood so kidney is causing sodium water retention that is also causing edema so there are two reasons for edema in heart failure give me a thumbs up i tried best i tried best at least i tried so that is the first reason of sodium water retention in sodium water retention one of the reason for edema is heart failure the second reason is renal failure now again it is complicated renal failure i will try renal failure let me draw a pair of kidneys we know that human have pairs of kidney so let me draw a human being let me draw a pair of kidney inside this human being what is the function of normal kidney why god has given us two kidneys to do the urinary excretion so that waste vestigial product in the human body that is created in that is uric acid urea bun that can be excreted out of the out of the human body in urine so human excrete urine from the kidney which is formed in the kidney and excrete the vestigial product in the kidney right so these are the healthy kidneys the two healthy kidneys imagine a situation the kidney is having some disease the kidney is having some disease that is nephritic syndrome some glomerulonephritis inside it nephritic syndrome so the kidneys are damaged the kidneys are diseased they are damaged they are not working properly so they will excrete uh so they are damaged listen they are damaged so they will not do their job they will not do their job they will not excrete urine they will retain the urine they will retain so urine is what urine is water now urine contains water urine contains sodium so kidney will not do its job kidney will not excrete urine patient will have oliguria and that is the kidney is doing sodium water retention so if there is more sodium in the blood more water in the blood the person will have edema so what is the cause of edema in this person the cause of edema is sodium water retention because the kidneys are damaged give me a thumbs up you got it you got it so that is the reason so renal failure may be sodium water retention ho sakta hai or heart failure may be sodium water retention ho sakta hai listen it like a story and the last but not least is increased capillary permeability the last reason for the edema is increased capillary permeability let me draw a blood vessel can you see a beautiful diagram from the robin see the first blood vessel see see this is the basement membrane and see the endothelial cells they are continuous the endothelial cells are continuous with each other there is no discontinuity the endothelial cells are continuous the endothelial cells are continuous with each other so here the pressures are normal can you see hydrostatic pressure is the outward pressure see the arrow osmotic pressure is the inward pressure see the arrow and they are equal and opposite net outward is 13 mm i have explained you net inward is 13 mm so there is no edema there is no edema now see the second diagram in the second diagram see this is endothelial cell this is endothelial cell this is endothelial cell these are the endothelial cells please appreciate the gap between the endothelial cells i want to show you these gaps gaps now the endothelial cells are contracted this cell is contracted this is all the endothelial cells are contracted so between two adjacent endothelial cells we have gaps this happens in inflammation this condition happens in inflammation if inflammation occurs in any part of the body the vascular permeability increase this is known as increased vascular permeability the blood vessel is more permeable now so what will happen in this condition so pressures are normal i agree the pressures are normal hydrostatic pressure is equal to osmotic pressure but it is not the case for edema it is not a reason for edema so due to the gap formation can you see the fluid as well as protein the protein present in the blood both are coming out both are coming out leading to edema leading to edema everyone give me a thumbs up so due to gap formation protein and fluid both is coming out of the gap instead the pressures are normal so that can lead to the edema in inflammation give me a thumbs up so edema are of two types listen either the edema edema is throughout the body if the edema is throughout the body it is known as anasarca it is generalized edema anasarca it is generalized edema that is throughout the body edema that is known as anasarca or the edema is localized to one point only it can be localized can you see a localized edema you may have faced it during mosquito bite if mosquito bites you or any insect bites you you have pin point edema edema at that point only have you ever thought why it is happening what is the reason of this localized edema localized edema ka reason hai inflammation inflammation can be the reason so at this point the vasodilatation taking place and vascular permeability the gaps are formed the vascular permeability takes place and because of which the fluid and the protein comes out causing edema there give me a thumbs up that is the localized edema give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up so we are done with the six causes of the edema let me tell you the summary who will help me in the pathogenesis of the edema who will help me in the pathogenesis of edema please help me tell me the six causes 1 2 3 4 5 enumerate them and tell me the detail of each of them can you enumerate them anyone enumerate them 
Rishinika, Manoj, Varun, anyone who is listening my lecture. I can't see the names of those. Anyone, please enumerate the six causes. Either the outward pressure is more, that is hydrostatic pressure is more, which is outward pressure. Or the inward pressure is less, that is osmotic pressure, which is inward pressure is less. So there is imbalance. So normally outward is also 13, inward is also 13 mm of mercury, they balance each other. But either instead of 13, the outward is more. So it can be 20, 30, but inward is same. So difference is more, right? Or inward is decreasing. Outward is same. It is 13, but inward instead of 13, it is 10, it is 5. So the difference will increase. So outward and inward may imbalance. So either increase hydrostatic pressure or decrease osmotic pressure. The third is lymphatic obstruction. The third one is the lymphatic obstruction. The backup are the lymphatic if they are obstructed. The fourth one are the minor pressure changes. I have already enumerated the minor pressure changes. That is the pressure of the interstitial fluid. So that is the minor changes. The fifth one is the sodium water retention. I have given two examples of sodium water retention in human body. And the last one is increased vascular permeability. Now, you tell me, you, you tell me the two causes of increased hydrostatic pressure. The three causes of, I am waiting. You have to tell me, Rishinika, Varun, anyone. So write down, start writing the two causes of increased hydrostatic pressure. The three causes of decreased osmotic pressure. The three causes of lymphatic obstruction. Minor, I have not given any examples, so leave it. Sodium water retention, the two reasons for sodium water retention in human body and one reason for increased vascular permeability. You have to tell me the answers. So, I guess Rishinika started answering. So, the two causes she is saying, yes, very good Rishinika. The first is heart failure. Which heart failure, Rishinika? It is both right heart failure as well as left heart failure. Right heart failure leads to edema of all parts of the body, that is anasarka. Left heart failure will lead to edema only of lung, that is pulmonary edema. You know the reason. I have explained it several times. You know the reason. Yes, those who have missed the initial part of the lecture, please watch the recording to understand. The second is the postural edema. That is in traffic havaldar, traffic policeman, the postural edema, the person who is standing for long hours. So that is the two causes. That is the two causes. Yes, very good. The two causes of the increased hydrostatic pressure, edema is due to increased hydrostatic pressure. Now tell me the three causes of the edema of increased uh, decrease osmotic pressure. Who will tell me the three causes? So, Rishinika have already enumerated. Very good. So, it is malabsorption. That is the problem in the intestine. That is renal failure and that is liver failure. Liver failure, renal failure and malabsorption. Yes. Very good. Very good. Tell me the three causes of lymphatic obstruction now. What are the three causes? Number one, it can be surgically removed. Like breast cancer, may the axillary lymph nodes are removed. The person will have, the lady will have lymphoedema of the affected arm throughout the life. That is the morbidity of the surgery. The second, hereditary or congenitally, it can be absent or they are defective. And the, what is the third one? Yeah, the parasite. Name the parasite. The name of the parasite is Vulteria bancrofti or it is known as filariasis. That will cause obstruction of the lymphatic. Right, right. Yes, very good. The hereditary or congenital is Milroy disease. Very good, Tushinika. These are the three causes of lymphatic obstruction. Minor, may I have not given any example? Tell me the two causes of sodium water retention. I am waiting for your answer. Tell me the two causes now. Tell me the two causes. Varun, Rishinika, tell me the two causes of sodium water retention. Just now I have explained to you. Two organ failure. Which are the two organs? One is heart failure. One is kidney failure. Kidney failure or renal failure. Write it down, renal failure. Heart failure and renal failure. Yes, I have explained to you. Sodium water retention occurs in heart failure also. Sodium water retention occurs in renal failure also. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Very good. Very good. And last is the inflammation. Increased vascular permeability that is gap formation. The gaps are formed in the lining of the blood vessel. Through that gap, the fluid and the protein goes out. So that is inflammation. That occurs in inflammation. Now listen the summary. Everyone. Everyone means everyone. It is difficult. Listen the summary. Let me, please let, please tell me the three major organs. The three major organs is the heart, heart failure, renal failure and liver failure. Tell me two causes of heart failure from the above table. Heart failure is coming at two places. Tell me the two causes. Two causes of renal failure and one cause of liver failure. Liver failure is one place. Who will tell me the reasons? The reasons. The two two reasons. So heart failure is one place. Heart failure is coming here and heart failure is coming here. So these are the two causes. So increased hydrostatic pressure and sodium water retention are the two causes of heart failure. The summary is in front of you. Yes. Two causes of renal failure. Now tell me two causes of renal failure. Kaan kaan pe aara hai renal failure? See, renal failure kahan kahan pe aara hai? You yourself tell me. Kahan pe aara hai? Renal failure ek to yera. It is coming in decreased oncotic pressure and it is coming in sodium water retention. Give me a thumbs up. So what are the two causes of renal failure? Number one, decreased osmotic pressure. 
and number two sodium and water retention so sodium and water retention is a common cause for heart failure also renal failure also but the other cause of heart failure is increased hydrostatic pressure the other cause of renal failure is decreased osmotic pressure give me a thumbs up liver failure is coming at one place only what is that place liver failure is here only it is the reason that is decreased osmotic pressure yes liver failure ka ek hi reason hai so what is the summary the summary is that heart failure occurs due to two causes liver failure renal failure occurs due to two causes and uh, liver failure occurred due to one cause everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you know the causes yes or no should i enumerate it is it is increased hydrostatic pressure here decreased osmotic pressure here sodium water retention is common sodium water retention in heart failure also sodium and water retention in renal failure also right uh, and in liver failure it is decreased osmotic pressure now renal failure is of two types i will give you the detail ahead mai fir se bataungi nephritic syndrome and nephrotic syndrome so this is the cause of edema and nephrotic syndrome decreased osmotic pressure and this is the cause of edema and nephritic syndrome i will explain you in detail right so, but basic ek bar sun lo yahan have you got it should i proceed ahead okay so we are done so the same story is written in front of you from some other book so the same story which i have enumerated so the same story minor wala remove kar do to five five are the main causes so total six causes are there if you remove the minor one there are five causes so same story is written so these are the diagrams we are done with the definition we are done with the normal tissue exchange that is starling's law starling's law starling's hypothesis we are done with the six causes of edema it should be at the tip of your tongue the pathogenesis of, of the edema now let me teach you the types of the edema there are two types of edema there are two types of edema one is known as transudate and one is known as exudate exudate okay there are six causes now where are the six causes these are the six causes i have explained you all the six causes now you tell me in the first five causes take them separately and the last cause that is increased vascular permeability take it separately so in the first five causes only fluid is coming out only fluid is coming out protein is not coming out because there are no holes there are no gaps in the first five causes so only fluid is coming out in the interstitial space and in the last there are gap formation the defects are there due to increased vascular permeability defects are formed so from the gap fluid along with protein along with cell come out so from the gap everything will come out so this edema if only fluid is there it is known as transudate so transudate and this edema in which along with fluid the protein and cells are also there this is known as exudate this is known as exudate so what is the definition transudate is the edema which is protein poor cell poor it do not contain protein and cell and exudate is a edema which is protein rich and cell rich so what is the cause of exudate exudate have only one cause inflammation or increased vascular permeability and transudate have many causes every one give me a thumbs up very fast very fast so what are the two types of edema it is transudate and exudate so transudate have many causes exudate have only one cause in transudate only fluid is present in exudate along with fluid the protein and the cells are also present so that is the definition of the two types of edema in front of you transudate it is protein poor cell poor only fluid is there exudate it is protein rich cell rich along with the fluid give me a thumbs up so i would like to tell you the differences now see the best diagram i can quote here the diagram is from robbins you can see the diagram is from robbins a beautiful diagram so the first one is the normal the second is the transudate the third is the exudate okay let me explain the three diagrams in sequence can you see the basement membrane in the normal can you see uh the lining the lining is continuous endothelial lining there are no gaps and see the pressure hydrostatic pressure is outward oncotic pressure is inward both are equal and opposite so there is no edema it is normal see the second diagram in the second diagram see the basement membrane see the endothelial lining endothelial lining is still continuous what is the difference from the first one from the first one pressures are different can you see the pressures here hydrostatic pressure is more the arrow is thicker and oncotic is less so either hydrostatic is more or oncotic is less see the background see the background where is the background i am asking about this background only fluid is coming out see the arrows only fluid is coming out so this edema is transudate this edema is transudate now see the third diagram third diagram see this is endothelial cell 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 this is so appreciate the gaps please appreciate the gaps between the adjacent endothelial cell so gap formation is there that is increased vascular permeability is there there are inter endothelial spaces which i am calling them gap 
I am calling them as gap, right? So from these gaps, protein will now see the background. See, appreciate the background. So can you see in the background there is fluid, the blue color, the light blue color is a fluid. Can you see the yellow dots? I'm marking with red. Can you see these these dots? This is protein. So from the gap, protein also come out. So here edema contains protein along with fluid, uh, along with protein leakage. Fluid along with protein leakage. Such edema is exudate. Now have you got the difference between transudate and exudate? In transudate, only only fluid is there. In exudate, along with fluid, along with fluid, protein and cells are also there. The reason here is the pressure changes. The reason here is increased vascular permeability. So that is the thing. Have you got it? Everyone give me a thumbs up. Come on. So the two types of edema is the transudate and exudate. See the differences between them. Transudate and exudate. In transudate, it is only plasma. In exudate, it is, it is due to pressure changes. In exudate, it is due to increased vascular permeability. That is interendothelial gaps, interendothelial spaces. Can I say transudate is non-inflammatory edema? It is not due to inflammation. And exudate is inflammatory edema. It occurs in inflammation. Give me a thumbs up. Here protein is less. And here cells are less. Here protein is high and cells are light, high. Since in transudate the protein is less, the specific gravity is less. In exudate, since protein is high, the specific gravity is high. We got it. We got it. Right. Same about LDH. Here LDH is also low. Here LDH is also high. The only difference is the pH. What about the pH? The pH of transudate is more. Can you see the pH of transudate is more? And of exudate it is less. Right. So let me summarize one more point of the glucose I am explaining you. Listen. Okay. So let me tell you this is transudate. This is exudate. Transudate and exudate. The two types of edema. You tell me what is the difference. So here protein cell, protein cell specific gravity and LDH. What are these four points and what about pH? Who will tell me the values? Who will tell me the values? Anyone? Who will tell me the values? Please fill it. So in transudate protein is less, cell is less, specific gravity is less, LDH is less. All these values are more in exudate. But the pH is different. The pH, pH is more in transudate and less in exudate. So pH is only opposite as compared to others. Give me a thumbs up. Again, give me a thumbs up everyone. Have you got it? These points. Now let me explain you the last point. And it is non-inflammatory edema. And it is inflammatory edema. I have already explained you. Non-inflammatory and inflammatory edema. One more point about the glucose I want to explain you. As I have told you, it is inflammatory edema. What do you mean by inflammatory edema? Okay. So let me draw two blood vessels here. This is a blood vessel. It is non-inflammatory. And this one is the inflammatory. Inflammatory means some bacteria is present. Now, there is some bacteria who is coming here. And because of that bacteria, endothelial gaps are formed. This is the endothelial lining. And please appreciate the gaps between them. And because of which the fluid is coming out, the protein is coming out, the cells are coming out and forming edema there. That is the exudate type of edema. So there is some bacteria now. This is some bacteria or not only bacteria. There can be some microorganism. It can be bacteria, virus, fungus, anything. So whatever fluid is coming out, that fluid contains glucose here. That glucose will be eaten. That is be consumed by the bacteria. So here the edema have less glucose content as compared to the plasma glucose. Here in, in transudate, whatever fluid comes out, the glucose content is same as that of plasma. You got my point? You got my point? What is the summary? In transudate, the glucose content is same as that of plasma and in exudate it is low because you can learn like that it is consumed by the microorganism which is causing the inflammation or edema there. You are not giving the thumbs up. Have you got it? Have you got it? Yes or no? So what about the glucose content of transudate and exudate? Here, the glucose content of the fluid is same as that of glucose content of the plasma. Here, glucose content of the fluid or the edema is less than glucose content of the plasma. Glucose content of the fluid is never more than that of plasma. Never more in none of the edema. You got my point, I guess. Now, there are some general points on which MCQs come in edema. If edema occurs throughout the body, it is known as anasarca. It is known as anasarca. Anasarca is the edema throughout the body, the generalized edema. Right? That is the first point. The second point, sometimes we have dependent edema. What do you mean by dependent edema? If the person is standing, the edema occurs in the foot. The edema occurs in the foot. It is due to the gravity. Gravity, the dependent position. It is occurring due to gravity. Right? If the person is lying down, the edema occurs in the back. The edema occurs in the back and the genitals. So edema occurs here, right? In the back and the genitals, in the sacrum especially, the sacrum, sacral edema. Again, it is due to the gravity. 
So such edema is dependent edema. So typically the patient will complain of this. The patient will come to you and complain, doctor, whenever I am standing, I am having edema in the foot. And whenever I am lying down, I am having edema in the back. So you got the point the patient want to say it is dependent edema. Dependent edema usually gives a clue towards heart failure. It is the cardiac edema. Now, if the patient is coming to you with edema, patient ka to ek hi complain hai edema. It is very simple complaint. Doctor saab, sujan ho gai hai. I am having edema at some part of the body. But edema can be due to heart failure. Edema can be due to renal failure. Edema can be due to liver failure. Edema can be due to other. Edema can be due to inflammation also. Right. Now it's your job to find it out. Which type of edema? What is the cause of the edema? You cannot treat edema. Edema is a symptom. You have to understand it is a symptom. It is not a disease. Edema is a symptom like fever. Fever is not a disease. If I am having fever, it can be due to typhoid. It can be due to dengue. It can be due to malaria. It can be due to COVID. No, you cannot treat fever unless until you don't treat the basic disease, the main disease the person is having. You can give paracetamol, but paracetamol is symptomatic treatment of the fever. It temporarily subsides the fever. It is not the cure. You cannot give paracetamol throughout the life. You have to treat typhoid. You have to treat malaria if you want to subside the symptom. In the same way, edema is a symptom. You cannot treat edema unless until you don't treat the primary disease. If it is heart failure, give the inotropic drugs so it will be treated if it is renal failure whatever treatment for the kidney you have to give that if it is liver failure cirrhotic you have to do liver transplant or whatever disease it is there give the treatment for that it is inflammation give anti-inflammatory drugs so you have to treat the primary disease if you want to treat the edema whatever paracetamol is doing in fever we can do it with diuretics here diuretics are the symptomatic treatment for edema it is not a cure for edema so you can give furosemide or torosemide or Pyranolactone, the most common diuretics which are used to treat the edema, right? So here the edema is temporarily subsided. So whatever extracellular fluid which is gathering and causing edema is excreted in urine whenever you give diuretics. But you cannot keep diuretics throughout the life for a patient. So you have to identify your job. You are a doctor, no? Patient is coming to you with symptoms. You are a doctor. You have to find out what is the cause of the edema. For heart failure, do a 2D echocardiogram to find out whether heart failure is the cause of edema, yes or no. For renal failure, do a RFT in the blood and do urine examination, the routine urine examination to see the protein excretion in the urine. For liver failure, do LFT. Do LFT and do the imaging. You can do the sonography to see the fatty liver and all, imaging all. And for inflammation, there is no test for the inflammation. You can do the acute phase reactant, CRP and all. So you have a list of uh, investigations with you. Now you cannot write all. Based on the basic complaints, the clues the patient is giving, you have to write the relevant investigation and find out what is the cause of the edema and treat accordingly. Have you got it? The complete story. So dependent edema always points towards the cardiac. It is not 100%, but most commonly it is due to heart failure. What about renal edema? If the edema is due to renal, now this is dependent edema. When the person is standing, it is in the foot. When it is lying down, it is in the back. Now when it is renal edema, edema mostly occurs on the face. Especially the loose tissue. The loose tissue present loose matrix. The tissue with the loose matrix. There are few tissues in human body with loose matrix. One is around the eyes. The tissue around the eyes. That will cause periorbital edema. So can you see this edema is periorbital edema. Or the tissue in the entire face. Number two, the tissue in the ankle. In the ankle and tissues of the genital. Tissue of the genital. So patient basically have this edema. Edema of eyes, around the eyes, ankle edema and genital edema. This is renal edema. So renal edema tends to accumulate in loose matrix. So that is the rule, right? So if the patient is having nephrotic syndrome or renal edema, so the edema tends to accumulate in the loose matrix that is around the eyes or periorbital edema. Give me a thumbs up. You got it. You got it. So we are done with edema. The pathophysiology of the edema, the types of the edema, right? Effusions have same pathophysiology, the same pathogenesis. So effusion is collection of fluid in cavity. Edema is collection of fluid in interstitial space. That is the only, the definition is different. But the pathophysiology, the same six causes of effusion are also there. So if fluid is collected in pleural cavity, it is known as hydrothorax. Hydro means water. Thorax means it is in pleural cavity. If fluid is collected in pericardial cavity, it is known as hydropericardium. Right. If fluid is collected in peritoneal cavity, it is known as hydroperitoneum. And the, another name of hydroperitoneum is ascites. The patient comes with uh, to us with ascites. Right. And it is also of two types, the exudate and transudate. So same pathophysiology. So instead of edema, if in your exam, the question is coming on effusion, don't get afraid if you have not read the effusion. It is the same as that of edema. Give me a thumbs up. Only the terminology is different. We have done the definition of edema. It is accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. 
and if it is effusion it is accumulation of fluid in the cavities of the body we have done the normal tissue exchange the starling's law we have understood the pressure the hydrostatic pressure osmotic pressure everything about the pressure we have understood the six causes of edema in human body we have understood we have understood the two types of edema the transudate and the exudate yes now coming on few important edemas i would like to explain only one there are many the important types of edema i will explain only one the renal edema i would like like to explain you only one term nephrotic nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome what is the difference in them both of them will have edema both of them will have edema both are renal failure both have edema but in nephrotic syndrome the edema is severe and it is generalized throughout the body right in nephritic syndrome the edema is mild and it is present only periorbitally periorbitally it is very mild right uh, and the cause is different okay i will draw two human beings in front of you two two patients in front of you okay i will try it is difficult huh? still i'm trying so imagine these are two patients in front of you patient a and patient b so to one of the patient there is nephritic syndrome to another patient it is nephrotic syndrome i will i will explain you we know humans have a pair of kidney so these are the pairs of kidney of both patient a and patient b patient b right the first patient is having nephrotic syndrome right and this patient is having nephritic syndrome you should you may be thinking that what is this the, what is nephro now nephrotic syndrome is the umbrella term it contains many types of glomerulonephritis just for example in children it is uh, minimal change disease in adults it is membranous glomerulonephritis and there are many other glomerulonephritis which are included under, under this term in nephritic syndrome there are other glomerulonephritis it is apgn acute pro pro proliferative glomerulonephritis post tropical glo glomerulonephritis rpgn rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis so all these are included under one term nephritic and nephrotic syndrome is not one disease it is a cluster of disease it is an umbrella term first thing okay i'm not teaching you the causes of that i want to explain you the pathophysiology behind it in nephrotic syndrome let's talk about nephrotic syndrome the kidneys are abnormal so what is the abnormality in the kidney normal kidney do not excrete protein in urine but here the kidney become abnormal and kidney excrete protein in urine kidney cannot filter the glomerular filtration membrane become abnormal so it is like a channi hum chai chhante hai na it is like a filtration membrane so normally if we filter the blood from that filtration membrane protein is not coming in the urine but here kidney the filtration membrane become abnormal so whenever we are putting blood the protein is passed out in the urine so all the protein from the body maximum albumin from the body is passed in the urine give me a thumbs up so this is the blood vessel of this person inside the blood vessel there is very less protein very less protein is present inside the blood vessel so that will decrease the oncotic pressure that is the cause of edema that is the cause of edema in this person and edema is very severe because hardly any albumin is present all the albumin is lost in urine the edema is very severe and it is generalized throughout the body give me a thumbs up that is nephrotic syndrome let me talk about nephritic syndrome now in nephritic syndrome also kidneys are abnormal what is the abnormality now what is the abnormality now what does normal kidney do normal kidney excretes sodium and water in urine normal kidney do sodium water excretion my kidney your kidney all normal human beings we excrete sodium and water in our urine but here in nephritic syndrome the kidney become abnormal it is diseased and it is not causing sodium water excretion in urine which it supposed to do so the person will have sodium and water retention in the blood this person will have sodium and water sodium attracts water osmotically so sodium as well as water is retained in the blood so sodium and water retention is the cause of edema here the cause of edema is sodium water retention due to abnormal kidney and the edema here is mild and it is not generalized throughout the body like nephrotic it is only around the loose matrix that is periorbital tissue give me a thumbs up i really tried hard no one in this world will explain you with such super simplicity right the nephritic syndrome the nephrotic syndrome the cause is different that is renal edema nephrotic syndrome nephritic syndrome i guess i just nailed it yes or no the so nephrotic syndrome edema is severe generalized the cause of edema is decrease oncotic pressure the cause of the edema here is decrease oncotic pressure because of heavy protein urea all the protein is lost in urine and in the blood hardly any albumin is present give me a thumbs up in nephritic syndrome the cause the edema is mild it is around the loose matrix not generalized and it is due to sodium water retention it is due to sodium water retention so i am done nephrotic syndrome nephritic syndrome i am done i am done in nephrotic syndrome protein urea is there so high protein content in the urine and the cause of edema is less oncotic pressure 
in nephritic syndrome protein urea is moderate protein is not excreted in the urine it is sodium and water retention which is causing the edema here edema is severe and generalized it occurs throughout the body here it is mild and it occurs only around the loose matrix eyes ankles and genitalia everyone give me a thumbs up i am done with the renal edema i have to stop now so i guess the chapter edema is crystal clear to you give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up do you have any doubt if you have any doubt you are free to ask uh, if you have any doubt please ask just a second let me see if i can see your chat give me a minute yeah i can see your chat so okay if you don't have any doubt i would like to stop here uh give me a minute to do few announcements thank you very much for being with me i really enjoyed teaching you hopefully same from your side also if you like the lecture don't forget to click on the like button before like uh, button before leaving the lecture please share the link of the lecture as well as link of the youtube channel with all your friends colleagues with all the medicos in your contact and please don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel that is let's crack meet pg and an academy future doctors and don't forget to press the bell icon for getting further notification what you can do you can get uh, the notes of this lecture if you want the notes and further like this lecture they are available free but not on youtube on the app on the unacademy app so go to the play store on the play store install unacademy learners app unacademy learners app from the play store after installing select the goal as neat pg neat pg category or neat pg goal it is for all medical studies right after selecting the goal search my name my name is dr priyanka sachdev my name under educators please search my name under educators you will get my name there along with my name you will get a profile link there is a profile link mind profile link on an academy please follow that profile link what are the advantages of following my profile link there are two advantages you will get a list of free recordings more than 500 free recordings are available on the app along with the downloadable notes the pdf of the notes you can watch any free recording of patho pharma micro psm medicine you can watch any one the only thing you require a code to unlock it what is the code i am giving you the code please note down the code is my surname sachdev s a c h d e v sachdev 10 is the code so via this code you can unlock any recording and watch any lectures any of the free lectures not the paid ones that is the thing so you can do that exercise on an academy if you take the subscription the paid subscription these are the new offerings we are offering we are giving to the new new paid subscriptions so previous year questions are available on the app now once you take the subscription you will be able to solve previous year questions subject wise uh, of neat pg fmg and ict with detailed dis discussion is given in the next month we are launching a doubt clearing batch whatever even a slightest doubt if you are having in any of the 19 subjects you can ask to your favorite educator on this batch so we will we are here to answer your doubts and uh, after every plus class we will give you a, a a practice question of 5 or 10 mcqs related to that topic so topic by topic we will make you strong the topic is strong right so th these are the new offerings we are giving so today tomorrow there is a free test you can give that free test using my code if you don't want to take the subscription if you want to join only test series on the need pg so an academy light is already there you can join the test series subject wise system wise full length previous year, everything is available now the best announcement is that today and tomorrow is the last day of an offer what is the offer if you take any subscription plus or iconic before 31st of march before 31st that is tomorrow 12 a.m in the night midnight instead of 10 percent discount you will get 20 percent discount if you use my code again my code is same that is suchdev10 s-a-c-h-d-e-v suchdev10 by applying this code instead of 10 percent you will get 10 20 percent discount don't miss out this opportunity once you take the subscription you will get benefit to attend the classes of all these batches uh via the topmost educators of the country you can see thank you for being with me and uh bye bye study hard i would like to see you again tomorrow morning so let me start stop here bye bye